On July 7, 2020, FBI Director Christopher Wray delivered a speech at Hudson Institute on China's influence in the U.S. More specifically, the highly sophisticated malign foreign influence campaigns orchestrated by the CCP that use methods including bribery, blackmail, and covert deals. Chinese diplomats also use both open, naked economic pressure and seemingly independent middlemen to push China's preferences on American officials. Mr. Ray further explained this middleman tactic. China will work relentlessly to identify the people closest to that official, the people that official trusts the most. China will then work to influence those people to act on China's behalf as middlemen to influence the official. These intermediaries, of course, aren't telling the American official they're Chinese Communist Party pawns. This FBI director closed his speech with a warning to Americans that communist China has a fundamentally different system, which many Americans have misunderstood for decades. There is a distinction between the government and the presiding political party, between civilian and military sectors, and between the state and the private sector in the West. But these distinctions that Americans take for granted are almost non-existent in communist China. The CCP will use an all-tools-and-all-sectors approach to carry out its diverse campaign of theft and malign influence. Ray's views coincide with those expressed by retired General Robert Spaulding in his new book, War Without Rules, which aims to explain the military book titled Unrestricted Warfare, authored by two CCP colonels in 1999. General Spaulding bluntly states, that the CCP is doing everything in its power to destroy the American way of life, and the only rule in CCP's unrestricted war is there are no rules. Are there CCP's middlemen in the American... Mm. Okay. Okay. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to the CCP Reality Check special series. This is the episode 10, and I'm your host, David Starwatcher. Together with me tonight is our co host, Nancy. Nancy? Hello, everyone. I'm your co host, Nancy, from New Federal State of China. He's Washington, DC farm. Glad to join David tonight. I'm also from a new federal state of China, Washington, D.C. farm. Well, without further ado, we're going to look into the update of Mr. Mao's gross bankruptcy case. And we are going to from this scope to see how the CCP is infiltrating the United States judicial system. But before that, I would like to read a disclaimer, which is required. So this video is for educational and informative purposes only, we are dedicated to share with you what is really happening in China and to try our best to verify information used. Jointly, we fight back CCP propaganda. We highly value your independent research, critical thinking, and comments from the CCP reality check team. Now we are going to, okay, we are going to move on. So now this is a start. We are going to look into the these two documents tonight, document number 728, which is also the, the order from the court, is the 37 million security deposit for Lady May, Lady May concerning on that subject, and document number 761, which authorizes chapter 11 trustee to act in any foreign country on behalf of a state and granting related relief of course, that's the order of requesting the court to give the trustee the power to do so. But before we continue, we are going to look at a, uh, Nancy is going to share a roadmap of the CCP's unrestricted lawfare against Mao's score with us. Nancy? Here's the We have 
have no intention to attack any individual. Let's move to the update on CCP's ongoing bankruptcy case against Thank you, Nancy. So we have been looking into the first person of these particular bankruptcy case, in particular, the, the parties and the people who are connected to the CCP regime. The first person is Luc Ate. We're looking quickly recapping is Luc Ate Pong. And Luc Ate Pong is a partner of Paul Hastings, who has an apparent conflict of interest due to Paul Hastings' connection to CCP. And remember, Miles Gore is not only a dissident, but also the number one enemy of the CCP. Now, Paul Hastings has been representing PAG in many cases and PAG on PAX, which is the plaintiff of Mr. Miles Gore's case. So now let's, we are going to look, recap PAG's connections to Paul Hastings, which shows Luke R. Depon has a direct conflict of interest as a trustee. Let's move on to the next one. This one, we're going to, we are going to quickly recap why PAG is connected to the CCP. Now, we know Luke Adepon is a partner of Paul Hastings, but according to Mr. Mao's course intelligence, PAG's Wei Jinshan is a top level spy that reported directly to Qi Shan Wang, CCP's vice president. And Mao's course is not only really the mouse called a dissident, but also the enemy of the CCP. So now we crop this news site, this news site in this website screenshot. This is an example of PAG's connection to Paul Hastings and in turn Paul Hastings' connection to the CCP. We look into the next one to further. This is a Qishan Bank website, and in here, Paul Hastings is being listed as Xinjiang Bank's Hong Kong legal assistant. We move on to see even further more to see how Paul Hastings is linked to the CCP through Xinjiang Bank. We move on to the next slide. Okay, this, all right. So this, we see in the red circled area, it's called the Harvest Fund Management. And it's funny that no one but Bruno Wu. Bruno Chong Wu is a registered FARA agent, which means he's a spy of the CCP. And we, in the next slide, we are going to quickly recap how Paul Hastings is connected to the CCP through this slide. Uh, we move on to the next one. Okay, uh, just here. The Paul Hastings is linked to the, is providing service for Jinshan Bank, and Jinshan Bank is having Harvest Fund as one of its major shareholders. And Bruno is a CCP spy, and he is the one who found who founded the Harvest Fund. So that means Paul Hastings is linked to Jinshan Bank and in turn linked to Harvest Fund, and then Harvest Fund is controlled by Bruno Wu. So that means Paul Hastings has direct interest connection to the CCP, and therefore, Luke a day point connection to CCP is obvious. Now we are going to looking into the order 728 as we finish the recap. So we are going to look into this particular one, which is linked to what we call the security deposit of the ship. In the red circled area, it says that the Hong Kong International Fund Investments Limited by and through its undersigned council hereby moves pursuant to paragraph 11 of this court's stipulated order compelling HK International Fund Investments USA Limited LLC to transport and deliver that certain yacht the Lady May to issue an order establishing the repair reserve in an amount sufficient to pay the estimated cost of the service and maintenance necessary to restore the Lady May to good working order. Its support there of HKUSA respectfully represents as follows. Now, this to summarize it up about this particular security deposit part, it 
is a $37 million security deposit from HKUSA. And this deposit was frozen before they sailed back to New York City. Now, they may have back in New York City. The precondition of this policy, however, is establishing a minimum zone, which is the area. And we have a policy with the ministry for the highest quotation, 759,836.41 dollars. Insurance will cover the majority of the maintenance fee. PAX, PA Act and Creditor Committee refused to offer a quote for the repairing fund, now, which the court approved in motion to 728. But instead, we, now we will see PA Act and creditors demanded to have the ship repaired before establishing the maintenance fund. PAX and the Credit Committee wanted to continue freezing this $37 million security deposit, while the HKUSA demanded to establish the maintenance fund and release the $37 million security deposit. So we're going to look into what does this quotation of $759,000 contains. In here, we move on to the next one, next slide. Let's see, okay, now we got the quotation on the screen. So the valve service is around $207,000. The bowl painting is around $23,000. The bilge board replacement is around $2,400. The starboard engine service is $425,000. And the insurance deductible will be $101,000. It will be tallied up to $759,836.41. So that is the highest quotation. So now the biggest problem is we see that the $37 million, $37 million security deposit was not released. I mean, the, the moment they, uh, I mean, before the repairment fund is being established. So why does that $37 million security deposit was not released the moment Lady May was back to New York on August 11? Let's see. Yeah, that's a very good question. Let's look into the details of the uh, $37 million security deposit. Uh, Nancy. Um, just continue. This is a screenshot from Motion 7 to 8, right? As mm -hmm. you can see, the ESCO Nancy, um, excuse me, uh, but I, I think your mic is being cut off and I cannot hear your voices coming out of your mic. Okay, our dear viewers, um, please be patient. We are dealing with a certain technical difficulties here. Uh, Nancy, can you... Can you hear me? Can, oh, okay. Okay, that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Continue, please. Uh, the S group, um, so we're looking at, in front of us, uh, we're looking at the... Um, a uh, screenshot mm -hmm. motion seven to eight, which was mm -hmm. granted by the judge earlier, mm -hmm. into the security fund for Lady May, the thirty-seven dollars. Mm -hmm. So the background of these seven uh, of uh, these thirty-seven million dollars security fund, the S fund, hearing from HKUSA. Himalaya 
into uh, as a, a lie that the Himalaya low should uh, at the rate of three per cent per month. Equal mm -hmm. about uh, 1.1 million per month. So the interest for these 37 million loans are uh, daily cost. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, so uh, thank you very much, Nancy. So our dear viewers, if you cannot, if you have difficulty uh, to hear Nancy's really clearly, I would like to help you to recover some of the important points she has mentioned. Uh, thank you very much, Nancy. So she mentioned that the interest, what she's saying is that there's an interest in this document, which says it would be $36,666 per day. So now a total of $436,666 worth of interest have been accrued in merely, I'm mean, sorry, it's in 13 days from August the 11th to August 24th. And that the PA, she also mentioned that PAX wanted to maximize the interest payment that the HKUSA has to pay. And Luc R. Depont, what he is doing is that he is siding with the, he, he is actually choosing to use the CCP's, the way the CCP dealing with a lot of things, which basically means they want to take Mr. Mao's score and his make Mr. Mao's score and his family to pay as much as the CCP could ask for, be simply because Mr. Mao's score is against the CCP regime. So thank you very much, Nancy. And now we, we are going to look into the document order 717, which is a even which is a re-request. So inside this entire red circle, it says the that it is an order pursuant to bankruptcy code section 36352154111108 and 1505 ACE confirming that Chapter 11 trustee holds all of debtors' economic and corporate governance rights in, debt, in debtor controlled entity. In debtor controlled entities, be authorizing Chapter 11 trustee to act in any foreign country on behalf of estate. And C, granting related relief. So there's, there's one thing very important here. So inside this particular document, I mean this particular order, Luc R. Depont, even wanted Mr. Mao's score. I mean, we will talk about that later, of course. But for now, let's say, I would like to ask a question. Why would Luc R. Depont, a bankruptcy trustee, who would like to have authorization to act in any foreign country on behalf of estate and grant of the estate of Mr. Mao's score and granting related relief? Nancy, so why, 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 would, he, why would he want to be acting in that way? I see. Yeah, uh, it's right for the uh, uh, go on. Uh, okay, uh, next thing I want to confirm that if your, micro if your microphone is still working properly. Oh, if, okay. If that's the case, I saw, okay, if that is the case, uh, Nancy, can you can you can you continue now? Can, is your microphone working in order? Okay, let me try. Can you all hear me? Yes, very clear. Okay, thank you. Um, sorry, I apologize for the technical difficulties on my microphone. I don't know what happened. Um, so, these are the 
Nancy, uh, okay. Nancy, I'm very, I'm terribly sorry. I mean, uh, the viewers, there's a serious technical difficulty that is being developed right now. That every time Nancy, our co host, tries to share some of the viewpoints, that entire microphone is being cut off. I don't know for what reason, probably, I don't know for what reason, probably because of the hacker from the CCP. But at this point, Nancy, thank you very much, but I might have to. I might have to help our audience viewers to see what is going on. Nancy is trying to share with us that Mr. Mao Scores lawyer has requested postpone the set 7173 motion and the judge granted it. Uh, with the motion 761, it was then filed to replace the motion number 717. So now we are going to move on to the motion number 761 to see what is going on here. So number 761 laid out detailed reason on, uh, on doing against the unprecedented request listed on motion 717. So in this particular in this particular red circle part, it says for reasons set forth below, Harris, the debtor has a substantial possibility of success of his appeal. The relief granted in paragraph 3b of the order is extraordinary without any review of the relevant documents of communications, assuming this court is appropriate court to conduct such a review, which it is not. Court is compelling the disclosure of documents and communications that are privileged under the law of the United Kingdom in connection with an action pending in the United Kingdom, paragraph 3b of the order was not the subject of any motion filed by the trustee. And the trustee has cited no authority in support of the extraordinary relief granted therein. The court did not issue a decision in connection with the order, so that there is no written explanation for the relief granted in paragraph 3d, 3b of the order. So now we have a Big question here, why would Luc Adepon, a trustee in a bankruptcy case, would require Mr. Mao to abandon his attorney-client privilege? That is not under the, U the governance of the US jurisdiction, but under the United Kingdom's jurisdiction governance. Uh, Nancy, can you share some of the things with us? Ah, good for now. Okay, great. So, right, let's look into the background of the local DuPont's uh, ask on motion that was dismissed by judge on 717. Right, the order is asking the data, Mr. Mike Ball, and Mike was a British lawyer to provide information regarding to the UBS case, which has no connection to the bankruptcy case. Um, and the lawyer to attorney a client's human rights privilege. And the U.S. case was under the law and the presidency of the United Kingdom, not the U.S., not even in the United States. Mm -hmm. Why look be interested in getting access to a lawsuit in the United Kingdom that has no connection to Mr. Mike Ward's bankruptcy case? Right? The logic is so familiar to us, the people give up all of their and Nancy, can you can you just uh, say the last point about what CCP always demands? Uh, demands what? I mean, yes, it seems like a very important part, but there's a little bit of the technical difficulty. CCP always demands to give up all of their properties, life, and fam even families to the CCP regime. Oh my the goodness. Regime determines the status and what the people can get or not. <sighs> Don't be trusted on giving this privilege, which is the uh, human right. It's unprecedented. Uh, this is the quote from the judge man. I definitely uh, hope it is not a complaint. And the judge man in didn't spend half the six of the ten. 
Thank you very much, Nancy. So, Nancy, you are very right about the last bit, which says Luke could, we have to ask ourselves, could Luke be trusted on this? And that is to give up a privilege that is a, not only just a human right, but a legal right and a legal privilege. This request is an Indian unprecedented. And as you said, Luke did, as we and also see in the document, Luke did not convince Judge Manning during the September 6th hearing. So there will be another hearing on September the 12th, next Tuesday, which is the day after tomorrow. It will be going through the pending motion number 728 and 761. So please stay tuned. So we are now coming close to a conclusion, close to the conclusion of tonight's episode. We move on to the next slide. Now we do a recap of the background again. People involved in this, there we see in this picture, these are the people involved in CCP unrestricted lawfare against Mr. Miles Kuo. Bruno Chong, who is the mastermind behind this unrestricted lawfare, we share the cases of George Higginbotham, Joe Lowe, Dick Elam Davis, and Elliot Brody, who have all pleaded guilty. We also shared the lawsuits of Pras Michel that is still in progress. We believe the United States judicial system will serve the rule of law. So please stay tuned for our next episode. Again, I am your host, David Starwatcher. And thank you very much for joining us tonight. And despite some of the technical difficulties, and thank you that you have, we, we'd like to especially thank you that you have continue to be with us until the end. And thank you for all the viewers who have engaged in the chat live chat section with us. But because of the time limit, we have to end this episode for now. So we'll be seeing you next time. Have a good night.